Hallelujah and blessings, friends. Welcome back to Hayek Kadosh Ministries, where holiness is a way of life, and Jesus is King of Kings and Lord of Lords. And together, God's people lift their hearts and say, Hallelujah. Praise the Lamb. Well, friends, we're continuing our study in the book of First Enoch. Today, we are in chapter 69, and we're going to make it to chapter 71, which means that we will finish the book of parables, remembering that First Enoch is broken into five segments, and the next segment that we'll step into will be the astronomical section of the book of First Enoch. Now, I have placed a link in the description box below, so if you'd like to follow along with us, go ahead and open that up, as well as your Bibles. And let's begin with chapter 69, verse 1. Now, after this judgment, they shall terrify and make them to tremble, because they have shown this to those who dwell on the earth. And behold, the names of those angels, and let me just say here, I'm probably going to butcher many of these names, but if you're following along with us, you'll understand why. Now, the names of those angels, and these are their names. The first of them is Simjaza. The second... Artikapha, and the third, Armin, the fourth, Cockabel, the fifth, Turiel, the sixth, Rumgel, the seventh, Dangel, the eighth, Nekiel, the ninth, Barakel, the tenth, Azazel, the eleventh, Armoros, the twelfth, Bartagel, the thirteenth, Basusagel, the fourteenth, Hananel, the fifteenth, Turel, and the 16th, Sympaziel, the 17th, Jetrel, the 18th, Tumael, the 19th, Terel, the 20th, Rumael, the 21st, Azazel. And these are the chiefs of their angels and their names and their chief ones over hundreds and over fifties and over tens. The name of the first, Jachan, that is the one who led astray all the sons of God and brought them down to the earth and led them astray through the daughters of men. And the second was named Asbil. He imparted to the holy ones of God evil counsel and led them astray so that they defiled their bodies with the daughters of men. The third was named Gadril. He it is who showed the children of men all the blows of death. And he led astray Eve and showed the weapons of death to the sons of men, the shield and the coat of mail and the sword for battle and all the weapons of death to the children of men. And from his hand, they have proceeded against those who dwell on the earth from that day and forevermore. And the fourth was named Piname. He taught the children of men the bitter and the sweet, and he taught them all the secrets of their wisdom. And he instructed mankind in writing with ink and paper, and thereby many sinned from eternity to eternity and until this day. For men were not created for such a purpose, to give confirmation to their good faith with pen and ink. Do you remember when Jesus said, let your yes be yes and your no be no? Be very careful about entering into signed covenants with people. It's better not to make an oath at all than to make an oath and break it. Now, I know that the Bible indicates that's an oath to God, but the principle is the same. We are to keep our words when we give it, and it seems to be that's what this is alluding to. Men were not created for such a purpose, to give confirmation to their good faith with pen and ink. For men were created exactly like the angels, to the intent that they should continue pure and righteous. And death, which destroys everything, could not have taken hold of them but through this, their knowledge, they are perishing, and through this power, it is consuming me. And the fifth was named Kazdajah. This is he who showed the children of men all the wicked smitings of spirits and demons, and the smitings of the embryo in the womb, that it may pass away. This seems to be referring to abortion. So it says, he taught men how to smite the embryo in the womb that it may pass away and the smiting of the soul, the bites of the serpent and the smitings which befall through the noontide heat, the son of the serpent named Tabot. And this is the task of Casbiel, the chief of the oath, which he showed to the holy ones when he dwelt high above in glory. And its name is Bicca. This angel requested Michael to show him the hidden name. Could that be the name of God? 
the unpronounceable name, Y-H-W-H? This angel requested Michael to show him that hidden name that he might enunciate it in the oath so that those might quake before that name and oath who revealed all that was in secret to the children of men. And this is the power of this oath, for it is powerful and strong. And he placed this oath, a K, in the hand of Michael. And these are the secrets of this oath. And they are strong through his oath. And the heaven was suspended before the world was created and forever. And through it, the earth was founded upon the water. And from the secret recesses of the mountains come beautiful waters from the creation of the world and unto eternity. And through that oath, the sea was created. And as its foundation, he set for it the sand against the time of its anger. And it dare not pass beyond it from the creation of the world unto eternity. And through that oath are the depths made fast and abide and stir not from their place from eternity to eternity. And through that oath, the sun and moon complete their course and deviate not from their ordinance from eternity to eternity. And through that oath, the stars complete their course and he calls them by their names. Remember Psalm 147, four, he has named the stars and they answer him from eternity to eternity. In like manner, the spirits of the water and of the winds and of all zephyrs or gentle winds and their paths from all the quarters of the winds. And there are preserved the voices of the thunder and the light of the lightnings and there are preserved the chambers of the hell and the chambers of the hoarfrost and the chambers of the mist and the chambers of the rain and the dew. And all these believe and give thanks before the Lord of spirits and glorify him with all their power and their food is in every act of thanksgiving. They thank and glorify and extol the name of the Lord of spirits forever and ever. And this oath is mighty over them and through it they are preserved and their paths are preserved and their course is not destroyed. And there was great joy amongst them and they blessed and glorified and extolled because the name of that son of man had been revealed unto them. And he sat on the throne of his glory and the sum of judgment was given unto the son of man. And he caused the sinners to pass away and be destroyed from off the face of the earth. And those who have led the world astray with chains shall they be bound. This is speaking to the fallen angels. And in their assemblage place of destruction shall they be imprisoned, and all their works vanish from the face of the earth. And from henceforth there shall be nothing corruptible, for that Son of Man has appeared, and has seated himself on the throne of his glory, and all evil shall pass away before his face, and the word of that Son of Man shall go forth and be strong before the Lord of Spirits. This is the third parable of Enoch chapter 70 and it came to pass after this that his name during his lifetime was raised aloft to that son of man and to the Lord of Spirits from amongst those who dwell on the earth and he was raised aloft on the chariots of the spirit and his name vanished among them this is also told to us in Genesis 5:24 when it says Enoch walked with God he was not for God took him and that's what this is talking about here. From that day, I was no longer numbered amongst them, the people of the earth. And he set me between the two winds, between the north and the west, where the angels took the cords to measure for me the place for the elect and righteous. And there I saw the first fathers and the righteous who from the beginning dwell in that place. Chapter 71. And it came to pass after this that my spirit was translated. And it ascended into the heavens, and I saw the holy sons of God. They were stepping on flames of fire. Their garments were white, and their raiment, and their faces shone like snow. And I saw two streams of fire, and the light of that fire shone like hyacinth. And I fell on my face before the Lord of Spirits. And the angel Michael, one of the archangels, seized me by my right hand and lifted me up and led me forth into all the secrets. And he showed me all the secrets of righteousness. By all the secrets of righteousness, does he mean that he was shown Jesus's life, death, and resurrection? 
He says in verse 4, he showed me all the secrets of the ends of the heaven and all the chambers of all the stars and of all the luminaries, whence they proceed before the face of the holy ones. And he translated my spirit into the heaven of heavens. And I saw there, as it were, a structure built of crystals, and between those crystals tongues of living fire. And my spirit saw the girdle which girt that house of fire, and on its four sides were streams full of living fire, and they girt that house. And round about were seraphim, cherubim, and ophanim, and these are they who sleep not and guard the throne of his glory. And I saw angels who could not be counted, a thousand thousands and ten thousand times ten thousand. We are also told this in Revelation chapter 5 verse 11. I saw thousands, thousands and ten thousand times ten thousand encircling that house. And Michael and Raphael and Gabriel and Phanuel and the holy angels who are above the heavens go in and out of that house. And they came forth from that house. And Michael and Gabriel, Raphael and Phanuel and many holy angels without number and with them the head of days, his head white and pure as wool, and his raiment indescribable. And I fell on my face, and my whole body became relaxed, and my spirit was transfigured. And I cried with a loud voice with the spirit of power, and blessed and glorified and extolled. And these blessings which went forth out of my mouth were well-pleasing before that head of days." And that head of days came with Michael and Gabriel, Raphael and Phanuel, thousands and ten thousands of angels without number. Now this ends verse 13. And before we pick up in verse 14, it says that there is a lost passage wherein the son of man was described as accompanying the head of days. And Enoch asked one of the angels concerning the son of man as to who he was. And so the answer seems to appear in verse 14. And he the angel came to me and greeted me with his voice and said unto me, This is the Son of Man who is born unto righteousness, and righteousness abides over him, and the righteousness of the head of days forsakes him not. And he said unto me, He proclaims unto thee peace in the name of the world to come. That would be the new heavens and the new earth. For from hence has proceeded peace since the creation of the world. And so shall it be unto thee forever and forever and ever. And all shall walk in his ways, since righteousness never forsaketh him. With him will be their dwelling places, and with him their heritage. And they shall not be separated from him forever and ever and ever. You see, the Bible tells us in 1 John chapter 4 that God is love. And the love of God is seen and manifested in the person of Jesus. For Jesus himself said, No greater love hath a man than that he laid down his life for his friends. And so he showed the greatest act of love by giving his life, laying down his life for us, his friends. And it says here in the book of 1 Enoch that we will not be separated from him forever and ever and ever. Well, in Romans chapter 8, verse 38, it says, I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. And so Enoch is confirming that which we already know from the book of Romans. He says in verse 17, So there shall be length of days with that Son of Man, and the righteous shall have peace and an upright way in the name of the Lord of Spirits forever and ever. Now, friends, these chapters that we have read today pretty much explain themselves, so there wasn't a lot of need for commentary. But as we close, let's just back up and look at verse 16 that we just read, which says of us, all shall walk in his ways, since righteousness never forsaketh them. First John chapter 2, verse 6 says that if we know him, if we claim to be followers of his, we should walk as he walked. And for each of us as Christians, that's exactly what we strive to do day to day. Yet how often we fail in doing that. But the promise here is that we on that day... In that new world, we will walk as he walked. 
There will be no suffering. There will be no pain. There will be no animosity. There will be no anger, no bitterness, no jealousy. There will be no hate. There will be no prejudice. We will each truly love others more than ourselves. We will serve others, bringing ourselves the highest state of pleasure. And we will do so without any hidden motives or agendas. For we will truly walk as Jesus walked when he was upon this earth. And we will live that way throughout eternity. A man had a vision of the day when we all arrive in heaven. And as we seat ourselves around the banquet table, and we finally celebrate the supper of the Lord with the Lord himself, and the table being full of all the treats, all the delights, all the things that God has created for man's palate, and all of the excitement and joy and fellowship that is taking place around the table. And then the Lord Jesus stands and silences all for a time of thanksgiving, reflection, and praise to the Most High for the bounty before us. And as the amen is said and we begin to feast, we notice that we have utensils to eat with, but they are four feet in length. And so as we pick them up, there is no possible way that we can eat. And as many sit confused around the table, wondering how they're going to partake of this meal, of this feast, he notices out of the corner of his eye, further down the table, a single elderly woman that takes her spoon, dips it into the bowl, reaches across the table, and begins to feed the other person. And the point of this illustration is that it will not be about us. The whole intent of the kingdom of God is to love and serve others. That the greatest desire that we will have will be to serve others. And that, my friend, is what this life is all about. We are practicing for heaven. We are here to make ourselves ready for the kingdom. And the grand design is that he is fitting us for service. So let me leave you with this today, friends. Don't wait till then. Find someone to serve today and serve them with your whole heart, just as if you were serving the Lord Jesus himself. Now, as I stated in the beginning of our time together today, next time we will pick up in chapter 71, which will be the beginning of the section on astronomy. So until then, and as he wills, know that I love you, friends, and I'll see you on the next video.